Michael and Colin Duchesson of Saskatoon have been involved with quinoa in one way or another for most of their lives. Ever since they started pulling weeds in it for their father Joe over 20 years ago. At that time, he was farming and also started up the Northern Quinoa Corporation. He had some bad years with frost and then he, based on that, um, he basically this was supposed to be a frost, frost tolerant crop so then that's where he took the risk on it and he had a background in pharmacy so he was also interested in, in the pharmaceutical properties of the crop. So, so in terms of his nutritional benefits, pharmaceutical properties, frost tolerance, he, he decided to get into it. He got together a group of local area producers and they started a business from there. Right now, custom harvester Murray Casper is harvesting this 110 acre field of quinoa on the Neil Strandon farm near Outlook, Saskatchewan. Strandon says it was quite easy to add quinoa to his rotation since harvesting this crop is similar to doing canola. I mean, you can see he's just going like nothing to it, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, he's uh, having no problems. Uh, it, it goes through the combine, you know, and, and there's, it, it chops up quite well, you know, and there's no, no, uh, so it'd be easy to, to disc it up next year to seed whatever I'm going to seed next year. In this his first attempt at growing quinoa, Strandon estimates it's yielding about 700 pounds per acre. He figures the net return per acre is at least as good as his other crops and he expects his yields to improve as he gains more experience. After growing pinto beans on this field last year, he decided not to put on any fertilizer this spring. I put 80 pounds of nitrogen on last year, plus the pinto beans with the inoculant. I felt there should be enough fertilizer. The guys at Northern Quinoa set up total production contracts with farmers and try to provide them with whatever advice is needed. Quinoa is very similar in size to canola, so having it follow canola in a rotation is usually a bad idea. Operations manager Colin Duchesson says well-drained land is preferred because quinoa doesn't like to stand in water. And the other thing is you would like to have an area that you preferably have a tree break or something like that because it can shatter at harvest if it gets very windy. So well-drained land, um, sandier soils if there's organic matter there. Growers are encouraged to plant quinoa on their cleanest fields since at the time of our visit there were no herbicides registered for use in this crop. It's a good idea to keep a close eye on quinoa for a couple of pests which can cause significant losses if their numbers start to increase. What we have seen is the beet webworm has come over from the canola and quinoa is its dessert so it'll come into the quinoa fields after it eats the canola. Um, Lagus bug can also become a problem, there are things you have to monitor for. At the time of our visit, Northern Quinoa had about 5,000 acres under contract with farmers in Western Canada. Colin's brother Michael says Quinoa is quickly gaining in popularity for its nutritional properties, especially for people looking for more of a plant-based diet. So you'd be, they'd be looking for, you know, a plant-based protein and Quinoa is actually the, if not the only one, one of the only uh, seeds that that has the all the nine essential amino acids so typically a vegetarian would have to mix grains together to or plan their diet very well the quinoa they can just eat as is and it's bioavailable they reserve all the amino acids they absorb all the protein from from the grain this quinoa being produced here on the strandon farm is the black variety which is a specially gourmet variety sold mostly to the restaurant industry the majority of the quinoa acres are the more common gold variety the farmers under contract pay $20 per acre up front and another $20 after their first delivery. We guarantee that we're going to take it back at the end of the year. We buy everything back on that, on that production. So typically this year we're paying for, for golden quinoa 75 cents a pound and um, we're finding farmers are very happy with the yields they're getting on 75 cents a pound. Michael says this black variety is somewhat lower yielding than golden quinoa which can yield well over 1,000 pounds per acre with good management. Some guys are even up in the 2,000 range depending on how clean the land was and uh, you know they put on their best land, they took care of the crop this year and they're getting really good yields. Quinoa is related to spinach but it's referred to as a pseudo cereal because of its versatility and it's also gluten free. It can be ground into flour and used in gluten free baking. Michael told us they also sell quinoa flakes which are pre-cooked and ready to use. 
the best way to eat these is you eat them just like uh, instant oatmeal. You put hot water on them, or you would uh, you know put a little bit of water and put them in the microwave for about a minute and a half. So they're ready in two minutes, and they're a good way to start your day. Um, all the nine essential amino acids. One of their newest products is a puffed quinoa made from the golden variety. This one you can just eat right from the bag. So uh, it's it, it, we from our washed quinoa, we you hit it with heat and it basically pops pops up. It's kind of like a rice crispy. You can use it in things like a rice crispy cake. Michael told us quinoa is thought to have originated in South America around 5,000 years ago and is known as one of the ancient grains. Northern Quinoa Corporation is the only marketing option for growers in North America, at least at the time of our visit, but quinoa production from South America is their main competition for the increasing demand here in North America.